Tell us a little bit about how Napa has changed. I mean, the, the Napa in the 1970s has to be night and day from what it is today. In, 19, in the 1970s, Napa was not wine country. If you were around here and you grew up here and you went out of county, everybody knew it as Zamola, which was the insane asylum down in Napa. In 1970, animal products, which is chickens and eggs and milk and all, the revenue to the county was twice what it was for grapes. In 1970, there was only about, about, about 11,000 acres of grapes here. For us, in the 1970s and on through to the 19, into the 80s, we were farmers. We did hopefully a little bit better than they had done before. And we had some different emphasis, but basically we were farmers. In 1989, when phylloxera hit, we had to replant the whole valley and we became viticulturists. We began to implement all the technology we've been thinking about for 10 to 20 years. And from the 1980s to the 2000s, we were implementing the technology. Today, I'd say to you that we've gone from being farmers to viticulturists to stewards of the land. Today, you have to, you have to do the right thing, but you have to do it in the right way. You simply cannot abuse your water or your air or your soil or anything like that. So we all considering ourselves stewards of the land, viticulturists tr truly, farmers truly, but we have gone into to being much more stewards of the land and caring more about the future. Okay, Andy, so we're, we're in the vineyard. Tell us a little bit about your philosophy of grape growing. Well, the philosophy of grape growing is basically you have to start the right land. You're not going to go anywhere if you don't have the proper land, and it has to be in the right area. You know, terroir is the, people talk about the physical features, but it also is as manipulated by the farmer. If we try to grow Cabernet and Canaris in a cool climate, we're not going to be successful at all. And so once you do that, then you have to bring all the technology that's, ab that's available to you with an emphasis on quality, not on yield, but on quality and within an acceptable yield pattern. But when we first started out, we used to talk about microclimates. And today, we farm based on the environment of the individual bunch of grapes. We are worried about how much light it gets, how, many, how much leaf cover it has, how much, how, much, how much wind gets in there, how much air gets in there, because we don't want to use pesticides or fungicides of anything of that sort. But we basically, for quality reasons as well as farming reasons, we, we farm for the, the, the environment of that individual bunch of grapes. And that's our philosophy, and that's how we bring. That's that's one of the ways that we brought greater quality to the entire operation. The reason I don't make wine myself is because I enjoy making grapes myself. I enjoy the land. I enjoy the people. Uh, I enjoy the just being outside and doing it. It's a, it's a totally different business, you know. Just because you can grow potatoes doesn't mean you can sell potato chips. And I don't do consumer marketing. I don't travel, but. I don't want to say it's not something wrong with winemaking. It's something good about farming. And if I was in winemaking, I could never have accumulated the grapes that I have. You simply can't, starting with nothing and doing it on yourself, you simply can't do that. And, the, and understand the business in Napa, over 50% of the grapes that are grown in Napa are grown by people who don't make wine. Both businesses, grape growing and winemaking, are so in capital intensive, most people couldn't do both. So some of us decided to go one way and some of us decided to go the other way. But it's all about your attitude and the kind of life you want to live.